Ask any Fortnite pro who the best creative player in Europe is, and nine times out of ten, they'll say Marius. But recently, he's been converting those creative skills into tournament placements, placing fourth in Grand Finals last season, winning the first solo cash cup this season with an insane match history, and now he's just beaten the European record for the highest elims in a solo cash cup game with a 34 elim win. Marius lands at the Underworld, as his goal is to get the Mythic Harbinger SMG, and most importantly of all, the Aspect of Siphon Medallion. This would allow him to spend much more of his time fighting, as he doesn't have to spend that time healing, increasing the potential number of elims he can get in a single game. This seems like an easy task, as there's only one single player contesting the drop spot. However, there's at least 10 different people who've landed around this drop spot that can all rotate in late in order to fight for this medallion. So after looting, he immediately looks to damage the contesting player, however they escape. Knowing that if he starts to fight the boss, he'll just get pushed by one of these players, he immediately rotates to the west of the drop spot to harvest the fast harvesting brick before pushing some of the surrounding players. He fails to open the fight with the snipe, but to close the gap as quickly as possible, he drops into the underworld water to gain three dash charges. In order to move as fast as possible with these, you must sprint jump and then use the dashes, as this allows you to keep that momentum once the dash is over, allowing you to then slide and move faster overall. Using this technique, Marius cuts the distance between him and the other player in half. However, he's exposed and takes 42 damage. Momentum is one of the most important elements of fighting, and Marius is a master of that. He doesn't stop to heal, instead he ramps height at the same time as the opponent, but just splashes once whilst doing so, allowing him to continue to pressure the opponent. But the real secret to success is the way that he thinks about fighting. Marius plays reactively, not proactively. So throughout this entire fight, his crosshair is placed on the opponent, so he's always aware of where the opponent is and what they're doing, which allows him to react to any plays they try to make. The opponent has height and is about to right hand peek, so Marius blocks with a cone before trying to counter with a side jump shot. However, notice the lack of sprint here. This side jump was done by simply walking to the right whilst the crosshair remained entirely on the opponent, jumping, and then trying to place a wall in front with a floor above and below. If he attempted to do this while sprinting, he would jump much higher into the sky, exposing himself. There's also a pullout delay when you're going from sprinting to his shotgun, meaning he'd both be more visible to the other player and not be able to shoot back as quickly. But as you can see, the opponent manages to grab the wall in front of him, and in a lot of cases could edit through and cone or ramp Marius. However, since he's been watching him this entire time, he knows that he is not going to do this, so the side jump is a safe play to make. However, to prevent getting pieced, he walks backwards whilst placing a ramp to block any edits the opponent may make, all again whilst keeping his crosshair exactly where the opponent is. Since he's one layer above, Marius jumps backwards and lands on a ramp, then places two high walls to attempt to piece the opponent on this layer, but unfortunately they manage to escape. Unlike last time though, Marius actually does a sprinting side jump. From a cone, there's almost no way to do a side jump without editing it up, but since a sprint jump increases the height of the jump slightly, it's possible to sprint side jump from a cone inside of a box. So with Marius standing on a cone with a ramp over his head, he can quickly elevate himself up to the same layer that the opponent is on. So he sprint jumps, turns around, places a wall and a floor to stand on before switching to his shotgun, then jumps again and takes a shot. He then blocks any returning damage to the wall in front of him, but also continues the upward momentum by placing a ramp to stand on and one over his head to cover his angles. Now this entire side jump sequence is a genius and in my opinion a must learn despite the fact he doesn't actually hit a bullet here. Remember how sprinting side jumps have a delay before you can shoot as you still have to pull out that shotgun? Well there is a zero delay between sprint jumping and building as there's no pull out time on building blueprints. So after sprint jumping up a layer from a cone Marius is able to place a wall and a floor to block any potential damage then go for a much more protected jump shot. This also gives him a little bit more time to line up the shot uh, despite the fact that he misses again. From here here, Marius baits the opponent to push forward by splashing over a right-hand peak before covering the top with a floor and editing the wall into a bottom right to set up a chop out. Whilst pickaxing, he continually looks for shots, however the beauty of this chop out is that he intentionally reconnects it and then chops out for a second time. During a jump chop, he hits this for 39 damage and then places a wall in front and a floor on top to block his angles. Had he not placed the wall, he wouldn't have been able to place the floor on top since this was all being chopped out, so this wall was required. However, the opponent then tries to reconnect and build back onto this, but because Marius edits him and chops him out for a second time, this results in him falling with his blueprints out, allowing Marius to grab the wall between them. However, given the option, Marius has incredible muscle memory to make a window edit, this four-tiled bottom right edit, or this bottom three-tile. In watching his fights, it's extremely rare to see him make a bad 50-50 left-hand edit. The four-tiled bottom right is really unique since it has this curve to it which allows the player to have a right-hand peak whilst entirely hiding their head from a lot of angles. However, in this case, Marius chooses the 3-tile edit as it has the same effect, but you just
just have to crouch. But by this point, another player has attempted to fight the boss back in the POI, and Marius takes advantage of this. Since there are many minions that spawn during the fight, the visual footstep setting can be abused. Since almost every player has the setting on due to Fortnite's amazing sound mix, it can be hard to differentiate which footsteps are NPCs and which are players, because for some reason these two aren't different colours or icons. A lot of the time, players don't even have to crouch as they can just walk straight up to a person fighting the boss and shoot them. Now these NPCs often spray at the player and miss. Now that's great for the player's health trying to fight the box, however their bullets have to hit something and that something is for the most part the builds that are protecting them. And it's often the builds that are behind the player which they do not notice have been destroyed. So after starting this fight, Marius rotates behind the player and jumps which removes his footstep audio so it's very hard to track him. And since the NPCs have sprayed a wall open behind the player, Marius is able to hit a big shot and then finish the fight off quickly. Now because he's aware that people will try to do the exact same thing to him, whilst fighting the minions he continually scouts around him which allows him to pick up another easy Elam onto picks who stuck up from possibly the worst angle possible and then importantly he boxes up in the centre of the room. The final stage of the boss fight occurs once all of the minions are dead as Hades will jump from his chair and then he'll spawn two minions with him directly in front of him. But since Marius is now in the centre of the room this allows him to figure out if any of the players are pushing in. Since the boss and the minions are in front of him any visual audio footsteps that are not in this direction are clearly players coming for the coin which allows him to spot a player to his left. After finishing off the boss Marius dashes to the loot covering this left side and immediately boxes up on it. Now knowing that the other player will most likely try to psycho into this box whilst he's looting he instantly edits a window catching the player with his pistol out. With a nice ramp and a few walls immediately after he's able to delete this player from the lobby without taking any damage back. After chasing down the fifth and final contesting player, he's finally set up to win the game with the aspect of Siphon Medallion and the Mythic Harbinger SMG. Now, this is great for WKing and dropping high Elim games, but the real beauty of this drop spot is that he only has to rotate another 400 meters to get to Grim Gate, where he can continue to fight for the Mythic Gatekeeper shotgun and the aspect of Agility Medallion. Since this POI is closer to the center of the map, it has even more people that might rotate through here, so on average this boss fight will take longer to finish than the fight of the Underworld, meaning when Marius arrives here there's actually still three players fighting for this, but he has to be the player who beats the boss as the first person to grab the medallion grabs these infinite dash charges and just runs away, so it's incredibly difficult and time consuming to chase them down. He sees two players running away from the massive builds fighting each other, so he takes his opportunity to finish off the boss, blocking the angles that both of these players went to at the same time. With his loot secured, he now has the medallion that will grant him 50 siphon on Elim, another one which will give him infinitely charging zero point dashes, a mythic SMG and the strongest shotgun in the meta, the perfect loadout to drop another 29. Nine Elims. After third partying Elim number six, he's left up against Kiro, who recently just placed one spot higher than him in the FNCS Grand Finals, placing a third. He almost gets fully pieced, but since he placed a cone before starting the fight, he's easily able to edit it and block the shot, and avoids getting fully boxed by phasing out of the top. It was close, but he makes a great play to turn around and spray back through the floor, resetting the cone and hitting Kiro down to almost zero HP. From here, because he has the dash medallion, he can just spray and break the wall at the same time, whilst dashing to fire straight behind Kiro, finishing off the fight. And he actually does something very very similar in fight 8 and a lot through the fights that we're going to see. After pumping the opponent for 97 damage, he ensures the gatekeeper shotgun is reloaded and then sprays straight into the back of the box and finishes the player off with the shotgun, ensuring to drop his sniper for 4 floppers which we will come back to much later. Note how he dashes though. Marius aims for the back left corner of the box as this means all he'll have to do is turn to his right to keep track of the opponent. Had he dashed into the back middle of the box, the opponent could be on his left, it could be on his right and he's have to spin around to try and find them. But the Mythic Gatekeeper shotgun is so strong it's almost impossible to not kill someone with three shots in it, even from 200 HP. But combine this with the health advantage they got at the start of this fight, the surprise dash into the box, and it's almost close to impossible for Maris to lose these fights. But this shotgun doesn't just do insane damage to only players, this also applies to structures. The Mythic Gatekeeper deals 93 structure damage, a very important number. Each rarity below this decreases by either 4 or 5, down to the point where the grey deals 72 structure damage. Now this is a significant deal as this is less than the 75 damage from a pickaxe, which means that one shot and one pickaxe won't break a fully built wood wall, so it's basically not even worth shooting at walls. However, the 93 structure damage for the mythic is incredibly important because when a build piece is edited, the HP reduces. Now from a fully built build piece, almost every single edit reduces to either 93 or less HP, which means you can do just as Marius does here in Elam 9 and spray into the opponent's box, take your shotgun out and wait for them to edit the cone and just replace it with one single shot. A brick cone edited from full health will drop to, you guessed it, 93 health. 
meaning Marius can replace it in one shot and finish off the opponent. Again, it's important that all weapons are reloaded prior to attempting this, as running out of ammo here is basically just an instant death. With these damage numbers in mind, it's actually possible just to stand outside of an opponent's wall, wait for them to edit, then immediately replace their wall with one single shot. But to counter this, there are a few edits that won't drop the wall below 93 HP. Any edit on a wood wall is already out of the question, as that drops less HP. However, by editing a window or a door on a brick wall, this will leave it at 96 HP, meaning it will survive. For reference, any 3 tile edit will leave it at 93 HP exactly, meaning it will be broken, so your choice of edit is very important. On a metal wall, both windows and 3 tile edits will leave it above the 93 HP, however a 4 tile edit or a top row will leave it at 81 HP, meaning it can be replaced. However though, remember these are all just assuming that the build started at full HP, so if the walls are weaker than this because they've just been freshly placed or they've already previously been edited, then this strategy will work on every single build piece. Many players are also taking the purple or gold rarities of the Gatekeeper shotgun over the Mythic, as they can modify them to have the drone mag attachment. This will give them 5 bullets per magazine, so they don't have to reload as frequently. However, since these do less than 93 structure damage, they're not as good, especially when you consider the Mythic already has a speed mag attached, so it's definitely preference. The player just has to be mindful when it comes to reloading this weapon, as it needs to be done frequently, in particular before jumping into the box. Now, if you hadn't noticed by one of our first fights, Marius loves chopping players out. In Elim 10, an opponent boxes on top of one of his walls, so to drop him out, he just edits a peanut butter edit. But his movement here is what's really important. Notice how when the box breaks, Marius moves forward and jumps. This is in case the player manages to connect some of the floors and manages to rebox, as Marius would simply land inside of the box that he's just built and would be able to finish the player off. However, they don't, so he just kills him straight away. Now, despite having the aspect of agility medallion to give him the dashes, he uses a lot of these up in closing the distance between him and Elim number 11. So similar to the second fight, Marius ensures he recharges these in the water before pushing the other player, which allows him to finish the fight quickly. And this is basically what the majority of the good players are doing who land in the top left of the map, always ensuring they have some sort of dashes loaded on them. Now after dashing into a few more players' boxes, Marius shows some great building grid knowledge going into fight 16. In this situation, many players would attempt to just replace the wall, make an edit, and take a shot. However, this can allow the other player to escape or just drag the fight on for an unnecessarily long time. So whilst pickaxing the opponent's wall, Marius understands that from the angle that he's standing at, the opponent can actually hold the wall at all. So rather than trying to replace it, he simply just pickaxes through and swings left into the box, opening the fight with a 130 pump. But since he knows the opponent can't have placed a wall in that tile, he swings back to the right, outside of the box, to avoid taking damage in return, and at the same time he places a wall to claim this space and a cone to stand on safely. He then just runs through and finishes the player off, turning what could have been a long fight into one that was over in seconds. Now up until the moving zones, he basically does a combination of nice peace control, dash phasing into players' boxes, and never-ending pressure with the Harbinger SM. So before the moving zone start, he's already amassed 24 elims, but his endgame strategy is particularly unique. Marius grabs three medkits from body he failed to get the elim from, and combining this with the floppers he had earlier, he has a ton of white heals. Now solo cash games often go down to heal off, so you may be thinking he's just carrying these to ensure that he wins the game and $100. This is true, but it's also so he can play the backside of the storm. At the time of this tournament, the wings of Icarus were temporarily disabled, meaning there were no mobility items outside of the Flowberry Fizz. This means that the backside of the moving zones are even more congested with players than normal. Now, if you're looking to drop high elim games, this is where you've got to be. However, there is of course a high risk of dying, unless you are the only player in the lobby with Siphon, allowing your HP to recharge after every elim. And if Marius gets stuck in amongst all the old builds, he's a ton of white health to keep him alive. Best of all, you can just dash out of the backside of the box using the zero point dashes, box up and spray the players behind him, racking up even more elims. Being the only player with Siphon and infinite dashes is a recipe for success. Now the game comes down to a final 1v1, Marius versus a fake Cooper who's healing off in the back of Storm. Now he could easily win the game, he's got the Siphon Medallion so he's got 100 HP, he's floppers and medkits so he could easily win the game. However, he sees the other player medkitting in Storm and isn't sure how many white heals he has, so he dashes over to him. After replacing the wall, he's cautious as the other player is holding his pump out, so to avoid getting one pumped, he takes his time and pops his flopper, and then edits a beautiful 4 tile bottom right, exposing the player's legs without giving him a line of sight and wins the game with 34 elims.